Chapter 27 The Invasion An hour later, Stosh and I stood on the marble balcony outside Alec Badalux's bedroom, part of the master suite on the top floor of the mansion, and looked out over the front expanse of the estate. A light breeze rustled our suits as we'd taken off the death robes after we'd seized control of the mansion. With my gaze, I traced the wide, winding driveway that led from the gate to the rolling green lawn that took up most of the front of the property. The gate had been closed and locked, and patrol officers were spread out along the mansion's property, along with some of the mansion's servants who'd surrendered and agreed to help stave off the town's invasion. A bunch of patrol members and servants, all with guns of course, also stood on the manor's roof, ready to pick off anybody who tried to break through the powered fence. The rest of Middleton's citizens were inside the mansion. The Battleuxes were locked in the basement. Most of the patrol and a lot of citizens had demanded they be killed, but Stosh and I decided to keep them in the basement until we figured out what to do with them. Hopefully they wouldn't wind up dead because of the invasion, along with everyone else. Stosh and I held hands. I could feel the light tremor in hers. We'd only been waiting ten minutes. The siege of the mansion hadn't taken more than fifty, but it felt like an eternity. I shivered even though I now had enough layers on to keep me warm. It was such an eerie silence, like the calm before the most brutal storm to ever strike Middleton, and the priceless manor property made it even eerier with its bright green lawn and countless majestic statues. So did the light breeze, not to mention the fact that we were so high up, which made it feel as if we owned the mansion and everything in it, even though it could all come crashing down on us in just a few minutes. Still, despite how upscale the mansion was, something about it felt different since Stasha and I had been there an hour ago. It didn't seem as large and magnificent as it did then, though maybe that was just because the rulers had been dethroned. Suddenly, all along the fence, tiny figures emerged from the forest that surrounded most of the mansion. They appeared as pinpricks between the fence's bars from where Stasha and I stood. Shouts echoed from people closest to the fence, then crackles of gunshots tore through the air. My heart rammed against my chest and Stasha squeezed my hand so hard it hurt, despite the fact that I wore a pair of thick gloves. It's okay, I said. It's gonna be okay. Like I had any clue. A couple minutes later, the pinpricks between the bars grew smaller and disappeared. Cheers spread throughout the crowd and grew until they rang in my ears. We did it, Stasha squealed. We really did it. They scarcely even tried to make it past the fence. They knew they wouldn't be victorious. She squeezed my hand even harder, and I bit the insides of my cheeks to try and cut back the pain. I didn't mind being physical, but this was a little over the top. Still, it looked like she was right. Precious power, we'd made it after all. Then straight ahead, something else appeared between the bars of the gate and grew in size. What the? I squinted. A truck, Stasha murmured, her voice totally flat. A crash boomed as the vehicle smashed through the powered gate, black pieces of iron flying through the air. None of the patrol officers or mansion servants moved as the truck coasted to a stop, probably surprised or gauging the situation like me. The invaders must have pushed the back of the vehicle hard enough so that it had enough momentum to break through the fence. Either that or had horses drag it real fast the traditional way, and then suddenly severed the reins. I gasped as more cars crashed into other parts of the fence all around the property, opening gaping holes before they drifted to a stop. Gunshots crackled as rivers of kids poured through the holes. Mother of Power the enemy warriors were a bit bulkier than our fighters, seemed to be wearing old-world sports uniforms of all different colors and with all different kinds of designs and images on them. Devils, birds, wolves. They probably wore pads, which explained why they were so puffy-looking, and fired with their own guns. We're done for, Stasha murmured. I could only nod, insides totally frozen, as I continued to watch the invasion.